Hey everyone, welcome to Browsy, the show all about browser MMOs and games. Today is Naviage, or Naviage, or however, it's Naviage. Basically, I think it's just a little combination of navigation on an age that takes place during the 15th century for the story, and it surrounds, you know, the turmoil of, of route trading and pirates and yar. So, this is, uh, the browser-based game interface, and it's heavy on on um, older traditional methods of browser games that utilize uh, resource management, time management, building up your your stuff, and your you know building up your bar here you can do, and also trading. But the game seems to be pretty deep. It has a lot of depth into it. Uh, one of the things you can do once you start getting past the beginning is trading and there's a huge world there's over 300 ports broken up between all these different areas of the world uh, and you can discover them and they're attached to achievements so you don't see any ports actually showing up when I look around because I'm a noob and I only have this area so far, because this is where I started right here, uh, near Ryukyu, which is the older name for uh, Okinawa. Uh, I, yeah, I wanted to go the Asian route. And, and you can uh, have a little character customization with what you want to do, with what you, your path is in life. You can uh, have a selection of a dozen or, or, or more uh, choices, and you get sort of like a major choice and a minor choice. So you could pick navigation, and then as your second choice, you could pick bartering. So you'll be strong in navigation and being able to travel around better and maybe faster and get better ships easier. While bartering, bartering be your second one where you can trade with ports. Um, I am sort of along that line. I think I took bartering and... Uh, I'm not sure what else I took. Let me set this volume down. That's awfully loud, even at <laughs> even when it sits down next to nothing. There we go. But uh, I took, I believe, something like that combination, like bartering and navigation. I actually forget, and really, I'm not very high level. And this is my first long distance travel. I'm going to trade. You start off with a boat and. You start off with a tutorial that lasts for a long time. Uh, I'm still doing stuff here, as you can see in my task list, which is sort of your quest log. And uh, it's fairly straightforward, and I'm glean what I'm gleaning from it is that it is very similar to a lot of the beginning stages of a lot of city building games, where it's just like, click this, raise this, so you can start saving more resources. But it seems deeper in the trade and the and the combat. And one thing here is uh, the economy, I guess, flourishes a little bit more and is slightly more player driven. Uh, right now, I'm dealing specifically with NPCs and different ports. This is the longest I've ever traveled. Uh, my boat can only hold uh, eight items. Its storage room is eight. And in my home port, I bought some of this compendium of water, and I'm going to come up here and see how well I do selling it, because depending on what you buy where and then resell it in another location, you can get sort of a little haggling bonus, which will net you maybe like 1 or 2% bonus, yielding you that much more gold. Uh, so if I, whoops, if I select that for all, sell... See, I was successful. My markup was 1%, about 52 gold. <laughs> so I made uh, the profit of selling goods at this time. I made 5,200. So not bad. So while I'm st while I'm still here, I'm gonna maybe pick up something. I don't think my home port has Napa cabbage, if I can remember. So that's fairly straightforward. You can understand that, and then I could just sail home and resell it. But what's interesting is players have more control over the, the economy via 
some kind of like m these merchant guilds so you can like pay into merchant guilds for certain types of items whether it's like a food or an ore or something like that uh, plus there's wars surrounding all these different ports and controlling if a guild or, or certain players control a large enough percentage of ports or an area of ports it can affect the price of items in that area and I find I think that is incredibly interesting and and worthy of someone looking into implementing a similar idea into a full-blown MMO like Vanguard Star of Heroes or Asia the newer Age of Wushu or or even other games where players seem pretty happy to have more of a static market like Rift and World of Warcraft. I think it's awesome. It, it just seems like an incredible way to ensure price fluctuation and it and it weaves into the uh, the the economy and combat. So I, I think it's really interesting. Uh, some other stuff you can do here is of course build up your your uh, ship fleet if we look down here let's let's look at my fleet I don't have much I have the uh, uh, Kisagi Maru uh, I named it and this is what I have right now so not much I'm not ready for any giant wars but you can enter wars and this is my chat window here Oh, one one other thing is, for a browser-based game, the functionality is very smooth and crisp and clean. I mean, look at me moving around this element here. Uh, this is my chat window element. All I had to do is click this. It's so instantaneous. It doesn't flicker. I mean, the coding must have been like wonderfully clean. And you can do the same with this. Uh, I. I haven't been able to move the uh, task main task windows and stuff and I haven't tested any other elements really but that's really nice uh, and getting back to what I was saying is the combat you can have wars you can do solo you can do against NPCs or other players it's really interesting you can of course you can join sort of like a guild uh, but it, it seems like there's guilds w it seems like there's a small hierarchy and another nice thing is, which I love it from Heroes of Gaia, which I covered previously, is uh, you can see an ongoing area battles and stuff that other people are getting into in the area. Let's look at the map again real quick. All, all is quiet on the high seas right now, it looks like. You can see nothing really going on here. Oh, but what's that? That's a boat that just popped up. This is interesting. You, there's all these little icons like little of little ships and harbors and they you can actually watch them move around and stuff like I could sit here and, and stare at this screen and all of a sudden one of these little harbors will catch on fire bec and there might be boats that all of a sudden come from from up here from Vladivostok and I can watch them. Here's one right here, whales. See, they're appearing, and then you can watch them actually slowly tick, 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 and move around, which is really cool for graphical representation of the map. And so you can actually, if one's on fire, you can see that it's being contested or attacked. But uh, in the chat window here, I'm looking for a battle because some of these you can watch like here's one you can even go back in time and just watch because they're reruns so for instance here's the bloody sales pirate harbor battle and I think this is one I did with just no this wasn't me so this is another player you can just click on it and watch it now this I wanted to show you this because not just to watch it but this is what combat looks like whoop that was quick let's, let's get one that works Oh boy, maybe you do have to observe it live. Heroes of Gaia is what I'm getting confused with. Or no, um, Heroes of the Realm, I'm sorry. Because Heroes of the Realm, you can always just go back and rewatch. Uh, I think this is over. 
No. Here we go. So, in the top right, you see the little grid mini-map. Uh, the blue and red dots represent ships. The uh, black usually represents something like a pylon. Here we go. Um, we saw a, mo a quick movement phase, which is automatic. I think it's automatic. Maybe not in PvP. But uh, it's one of those types, like a lot of other games, where it's a combination of AI and a little bit of manual control. So we're watching this battle play out right now, the bloody sales pirate harbor 601 at level 61 so and i love this i just talked on google plus about how this is a guilty pleasure of mine i <laughs> i just love it i like i don't mind watching this stuff and it does attract me uh, you know and i would like i i wouldn't mind seeing more of it i just it's just fun and but it is more fun knowing that i have some kind of influence before the battle starts, like like customizing your fleet, placing them where you want on a grid map, maybe assigning specific skills ahead of time, sort of like old time RPGs, and then just letting them go and seeing how that plays out. I love that because it feeds into a little bit of how I'm just incredible, and I'm, I'm an incredibly slow player at everything. So I've always been leaning towards controls and schemes and mechanics and everything that allow me to make the time. So even when I'm watching, like, you know, I'm watching this play out, and it might be faster than I would be able to keep up if I were playing it, but I'm not playing it, so that's why I'm cool with it. And, and it's the beforehand that I have total control over, and I can go at my own pace. I, I, I mean, just to be absurd, I could sit there and stare at the screen for an hour. I mean, I'm an old... I played Battletech, an, an older... Uh, well, everybody knows uh, about MechWarrior Online now, but Battletech was the original was the original game. Actually, before that, it was like Droids or something. But Battletech is a pen and paper slash strategy board game that was a tabletop board game. You had your little pieces on, he on a hex map, and then you had your character sheets. You had a pencil. I, I mean, I would spend hours and hours working out that stuff, and then the one m round of battle could take uh, 30 minutes to an hour, depending. You know, it could take less, but it could take more, too. So I like that stuff, I guess partly because I'm just a slow person. I'm, like, really slow. But I am methodical, and I do like to have influence. So, and I, I'm thinking that maybe there is a lot of other people out there like me, which I find a bit surprising. I didn't, I thought I was kind of in the minority, because a lot of these games allow, are just right up my alley. Uh, here's the realm does this, and uh, here's a guy to, here's a guy a little bit more shallow on that end, but this, so this is a typical battle, and I can move it around, I think, let me see, by via the uh, mini-map whenever it's showing. But then it will... But the AI map keeps moving it, so it'll take over when I try to manually move the main camera viewpoint. So here we go. Yeah, see? I can click around. Boink. But see? The camera keeps yanking it back. Because it's like, no, it's this is whose turn it is. Yank. But, uh... So you can kind of look around all over and there's gigantic wars I watched one not too long ago uh, that took well, it took a long time to play out but it was really interesting and I think the players actually had much more control like on during that battle because that was a giant war and the wars uh, are they heavily affect port and economy and your belongings and stuff. I've read a few bit, some cursory stuff on the tutorials, which they, as a side note, they have an excellent tutorial, step by step on, because the game can get a little bit deep and complex economy-wise and, and learning about doing the on-the-surface economy stuff, typical buying and selling, and just 
just finding out what sells better wares out of 300 plus ports is hard enough. But also because the merchant guilds affect that, the wars affect that. So it is a nice tutorial it's, that you have on the website here. And you can sometimes see it in the task log. It'll say click here to learn step by step and it will shoot you over to another web page. Um, but the giant wars, I remember briefly reading that they said, here's some tips, always empty out your stock and this and that and do that because I guess if you take place in the war, it can just decimate all your belongings and stuff and really, you can really take a blow from it. But there was a ton of ships involved and it was a huge battle. But you can see that how this one, even this one, is not very many ships and it's taking a while. Probably mostly because this was a closer matched. In the war, it seems like there's a wide, wider level range that are just all thrown together. In this one, it seems more like a duel that you would pick, you know? Like you kind of had picked and choose your enemy and they're probably about the same toughness as you so the fight can drag out a little bit longer. But we should be able to just quit this and bam, because we were only observing. So I'm really enjoying this game. I'm playing it a lot. I It hasn't dropped off my radar yet after some weeks. And I'm still only just kind of getting into it and scratching the surface of it. But uh, so here's what I can do. I don't know if I actually set sail, but it's nothing spectacular. I can go to the Trade Center, Trade Center Worker. I I, okay, I remember I already bought that. Now I can go to customs, my dock purser, because there's <laughs> there's a lot of little rules which are add to a bit of immersion and and spice things up with the complexity of this game. Like you can't you, you have to have permission to do something. You have to obtain licenses and uh, you have to get bigger and better ships to go farther. Take to you can, and then to discover the ports like I was talking about. So I can hit trade, and I can go back home, hit command to actually go. And you can see, just from that, di it's going to take me 35 minutes to go from here. There's my little boat. I don't know why it says Anton, but to go, I think that's the port. But just to go from, see how it moved? See it moving a little bit? You can see it moving. So just to go from here down to this red dot is 35 minutes. Now imagine, imagine going from there to here, <laughs> or actually it'd be sure because it they'd go uh, east. But well, unless I went to the to the east coast of here, or even uh, even over to here somewhere. <laughs> There's a fire. See, there was some uh, fight going on there. That might signify a current battle or a battle where somebody lost the harbor or something. But that's about it. That's a look at, at Navi Asia. Oh, I wanted to mention one other, other thing that, that I can't show you now, but I made a pre-recording. If you look at my other videos, they did a really, infer a really interesting kind of advertisement. They, there's real women that appear on the screen, right on the screen. Like, and then just start talking to you like it's live video. It's, I, I was fascinated by the technology, like the, the way it seemed to present itself. There was no loading, there was no nothing, no flickering, no nothing. Literally, I was, I hit a task quest and hit complete, and I much, must have reached a certain achievement to, to kind of trigger it. And then all of a sudden from the left side, a woman faded like a ghost fading into view faded into existence and then like she was about the height of half the screen she walked a little ways towards the screen and just looked at me and started talking to me and saying congratulations and it was a real person like dressed in a pirate outfit but I found that really really interesting and it happened a second time with a second girl or woman and I I imagine that's a little bit of a hook maybe for some people because they're like, oh, if I keep playing, I'll get another one to appear. And who, what will that pretty one look like or something? I don't know. But it's really interesting. 
in just that technology because it was right here in the browser like I could continue to poke around and and control things while she sat there and talked to me for and it was a, like a couple minutes but it was interesting and I, I never seen another browser game do that so that's Navi age it's, uh, I consider it a deep a deep pretty complex game it it does it supposedly does get really complex and deep and offer a lot of uh, complexity with controlling areas joining it in joining with allies and guilds and fighting these giant wars and and trying to keep control of ports and discovering hidden ports and and making a ton of money in a way it reminds me of fundamentally what kind of uh, Eve is about only Eve's combat systems ha are completely different and interesting in their own way uh, but that's what it that's what kept coming to my mind and I know I you could probably say that about any uh, MMO browser MMO like this but I don't I don't think like that with any MMO browser I only thought it with this one so I thought that was interesting so stay tuned for uh, next week um, um, P. Smith from Dragon Chasers uh, I, uh, I'll get it next week when I'm actually airing it for sure what his website is the address I think it's, it might just be dragonchasers.com but he has a blog called Dra Dragon Chasers and he, he turned me on to an, an awesome little browser game called Leap Day which I'll be covering next Wednesday right here on Browsey and uh, you don't don't want to miss that. Don't miss it because it's really awesome. <laughs> so until next Wednesday, don't forget to check out my other shows. You can find me on Twitter at Jeremy underscore Stratton. Uh, I'm on Google Plus a ton these days. Just search my name, Jeremy Stratton. And I do network a lot on Google Plus, so don't be afraid to um, add me to a circle and request. And I could add you back to some. I find a circle to put you in somewhere. Stuff you in a bag somewhere now. <laughs> And uh, tune in for all my other shows. Uh, I've got Dungeoneer, Telling Times, User, uh, and more. <laughs> so, and next Wednesday is Leap Day, so I'll see you next video.